Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center. But let's find out where this center is. Doggone it. <laughs> Title of this talk is uh, Let's Put Zen and Jesus Together. Let's, let's put uh, Christianity and Buddhism uh, together. Let's put the cross together. You know, the cross going to make a cross. Well, let me go back. You know, I've ever since the beginning of my journey, which really began, I believe, I know it began before, but it seemed to uh, come to a, a, a point uh, back in the late 50s, 1959, 58, 59, when I was on a submarine and I was reading the works or the autobiography of Thomas Martin. Uh, I believe it was the Seven Story Mountain, where he where he wrote about his journey uh, to a Trappist monastery in Kentucky, and taking the vow of silence and disappearing. It was like a submarine on the surface. Oh, it's a little surface ship, and the next, where did that ship go? Where did Thomas Merton go? I wanted to know. I wanted to find out. Why did he give up? An acad promising academic career, intellectual, teacher, philosopher, and disappear in a Trappist monastery. Why did he go to Davy Jones' locker? So anyway, I wanted to know. So my whole uh, journey had really, as I look back on it, I'm 86, as I look back on it, it has been trying to put two hands together. Uh, the Christian hand and the Buddha hand. I left the uh, uh, Western Christianity, I suppose, when I got kicked out of a rejected uh, from seminary. I was going to be a Presbyterian minister. <laughs> Best thing that ever happened to me. But I went west, like I went east, like Thomas Merton. I went into Buddhism and then Zen, into mysticism, into the into the Eastern mysticism. But first, you see, Thomas Merton introduced me to Western mysticism, the great mystics of the Middle Ages, St. John of the Cross and uh, Teresa and St. Francis, and all of these mystics of the Middle Ages of, of the Holy Roman Catholic Church, you see. They all got thrown out, you see, with the bathwater when the Protestants came. But they were there in the Middle Ages. And so Merton connected two up, the, the, the mystics of the Christianity that he uh, was embedded with to the mystics of Buddhism and Zen particularly. So it's like two hands left and right. So I wanted to, my whole life I think has been trying to put these two hands together. So I just had an insight this morning I want to share with you because I was writing to, uh, usually my insights come when I'm, my, this time it was somebody who's making a comment on my YouTube talk. <laughs> So, I, so I, I wrote this out and I was amazed. So let's look at the cross. If you're going to understand Christianity, you have to go into the cross, right? Here is the cross. You know, if you're Protestant, it looks like that. If you're Catholic, it looks like that. Boom, boom. Which is it? And so then, if you go, uh, if you go uh, to the east, instead of the cross, you have the circle. Zen is a circle, is zero. Zen means zero. And it's usually expressed or written with a calligraphy stroke. Boop. A stroke, one stroke. Boop. An action. Boop, you see. An action that erases everything. So where is the, how do you get zero? I was, I was listening to a, uh, on uh, TikTok yesterday, and they were talking about the creation of zero. It wasn't until around six or seven hundred A.D. that the Hindus conceived of zero, and that conception went to the uh, golden age of Islam uh, in, in Baghdad or whatever, and the mathematicians of the of the Islam, and they they were, were able to use the zero in mathematics and it opened up a whole new realm, you see. So this zero. So the zero, if you look at here, usually if you look at Celtic crosses, 
there's going to be a circle right there. Here it's kind of a, a point, a still point. A still point. A zero is a still point. It's not a real circle. It's a still. It's a null point. A zero is not a drawn circle. It's a null point. It's empty. A, a negative point. A positive point is like dots. Boop 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 boop. Connect them all. Make a picture. What's a null point? What's a negative point? It's empty. It's not there. So the zero is a great conception to uh, to uh, to be able to imagine nothing, because <laughs> everything the mind can't conceive of nothing. It always has to even nothing becomes something. You say, oh, well, there's nothing's there. Well, something is there. If you say the drawer is empty, oh, the drawer is empty. There's nothing there. Well, it's empty. It's full. It's full of drawer. <laughs> It's full of drawer. So this whole thing about emptiness, you know, you cannot, emptiness cannot be known. Because whatever you know, it's going to be something, even if you call it emptiness, you see. So emptiness is the null point. Is that point right there. So let's get into this. What is the horizontal beam? What is the horizontal beam? It takes two beams to make a cross. What's the horror? This, this is time. You got past, past, future. Here is the present moment, but you can't know the present moment because it's zero. It's empty. So all we know is our ideas. What's the present experience of the present moment? I'm having an experience, but that isn't reality. That's your experience. You see, so reality is the totality that cannot be known because whatever you know is going to be something, which is going to be a reflection of the totality, a momentary flash, a star, a setting, a bubble popping, a flash of light, you see. So we're lost, you see, on the horizontal beam of time. Past, I was born here, I die here, I got a little space in here. <laughs> On the either side, empty, empty, zero, zero. Got a little time here. So I'm, we're all walking on the horizontal beam, you know, in gymnastics, you know, trying to balance on the horizontal beam. This is metaphorical. Trying to balance on the horizontal beam is trying to balance on the time. The horizontal beam is time, past, present, future. And it's all in the mind. With no mind, no time. If you have Alzheimer's, no time. You're just now. Time and mind, thinking, cannot be separated. Horizontal. Yet we know there's a vertical beam. So what's the vertical beam that holds up the horizontal beam? Well, the vertical beam is now. You could read Eckhart totally, the power of now. The now is not there. The now is not here and not there. It's not here and not there. The now is now. So no matter where you go on the horizontal beam, it's now. So this is a moving now, a portable now. You see, the vertical now is always moving, but we can't find it. We can't find it, you see. So we're always looking for the vertical beam in time, or maybe tomorrow. I'll wake up to maybe tomorrow if I, uh, maybe next year I'll be enlightened. Maybe next year I'll know the truth. Maybe next year if I do enough meditation I'll know myself and be at rest. Maybe, 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 maybe do more yoga. I'll be now. I'll find the vertical beam. I got to do it. It means to an end. Even Buddhism become, you know, do the eightfold path. It's just eight steps. <laughs> if you do them correctly, you'll be now. Or maybe you don't suffer enough. Maybe you got to suffer more to get to be now. You see? Oh, maybe I need to. Maybe I need to have been punished. I've been punished. So maybe if I uh, redeem myself and say I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I promise not to do it anymore. I'll be now. So we're trying. Oh, we're trying to get to this now, the power of now, on the horizontal beam of suffering. So the horizontal beam is suffering. You see Jesus hanging from the horizontal beam, hanging in time, 
were hanging from the horizontal beam in time, looking for the vertical now. So where is it, you see? You see the, so the, you see the dilemma? We cannot find the vertical beam of now because it's unknowable. It's zero. It's empty. It's not an experience. It's not in memory. It's not known. The vertical beam is unknowable. Oh, look at look at Space Odyssey 2001, one of my favorite go-to metaphors. What is that beam? What is that obelisk that appears to the apes and to the astronauts? They don't know what it is. Yet when it appears, they evolve. Intelligence is awakened. When the horizontal beam appears, when the obelisk appears, the monks make to the, the apes make tools. The astronauts go to more transcendent levels of being. So the vertical beam, when it appears in your life, appears as a mystery, a zero, an unknowable. What is this, you see? What is this? Emptiness. What is this nagging feeling? What is this bother? What is this irritation? What is this yearning? What is this yearning in our hearts? What is this yearning that calls us beyond the horizontal beam? We think it's tomorrow. It's over the horizon. The, the, the pot at the end of the rainbow. The treasure guarded by the dragon. All of these, you know, the, the resolution, the peace, the rest in peace, you see, is always tomorrow. But we're looking in the wrong place. We're looking on the horizontal beam. We are the vertical beam, you see. That's the Zen of it. So Zen gets into this by getting into form is emptiness, emptiness is form. This is the MC square of Buddhism, of Zen, you see. If you apply Einstein's theory of relativity, M E equals MC square, you open up matter. And E equals MC square, basically that's Zen for energy, which is empty, is mass, which is form. Energy is form, form is energy. Emptiness is form, form is emptiness. Here we go back to the cross, you see, the wisdom of the cross, you see. How do I get to the horizontal beam? How do I get to the vertical beam? Why? Through suffering. I have to go through my pain, the pain of the horizontal beam, to break through to the joy of the vertical beam. Now we look at the cross, you see. So this is a very deep symbol. I mean, this cross is ancient. It's not just for Christianity. This goes back before Christianity. It's like this. Like this is like E equals M C square. This is like the Zen formula or equation. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. You see, form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. They're different, but they can't be separated. Now, where can't they not be separated? You see, we try to separate them. If I'm running on the horizontal beam, i have already looking for the vertical. I've separated it. I don't have. The vertical beam, so it's tomorrow. I gotta improve myself. I need more home improvement. <laughs> the vertical beam of rest of zero is always tomorrow. So we're always running. And when we get to the next vertical beam or the next big product, it lasts for a while, but then it's gone. It's ephemeral, like a flash in the night, like a lightning bulb. Poof, and now we're looking for another one. The treadmill is the horizontal beam, you see, of time. So the self, the sense of self, lives on the horizontal beam. This is where we are. We run back and forth, back to the future, <laughs> see, looking for that which is stuck in the earth, in the ground. So when Mara comes and tempts the Buddha and asks him the questions and throws the fear at him and throws desires at him, and the Buddha just so puffs them off. And then they ask him doubt, you know, you know, why? Who do you think you are, Mr. Buddha? 
<laughs> What's your authority? What's your authority? What's your scripture? What are your credentials? And Buddha points to the ground. Buddha points to the ground. That pointing to the ground is the vertical beam. Now, so, Buddha is the awakening of now, which is, this is important, both the horizontal and the vertical. Not one or the other. People, non-dualism is, 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 oh, I've discovered the vertical by getting rid of the horizontal. Non-dualism and this pop dualism in social media is basically the discovery of emptiness, but it's empty because it's not form. You see? So now, oh, I'm arrived because I don't mean anything. <laughs> Illus the world is an illusion. It doesn't mean anything. Aren't you happy now? <laughs> You've arrived at zero. You've arrived at emptiness. But you're missing something. What? Form. <laughs> life. Life is form. You're missing life. You're missing, you're missing the formula for life. The formula for life is the intersection, boop, of the horizontal time and the timeless now. And that's where we have to live, which is, in Zen terms, the unknowable. The unknowable. It can't, you, so when uh, the uh, Bodhidharma comes uh, to China and he, and he meets the great Emperor Wu, and the Emperor Wu asks him, the sage from the West, he's an old man, he's in his 90s or 100, I don't know, who are you? And Bodhidharma says, I don't know, and walks off, sits in a cave for nine more years. And the assistant turns to the Emperor says, who was that man? Who was that masked man? And the emperor says, I don't know. But given enough time, he believes, on the horizontal beam, I'll find out who he is. Maybe he's over here. Maybe I'll do some Google on him. Maybe I'll Google up this guy and find out who he is, you see. So I believe I'll know, given enough time. But Bodhi Dharma says, I don't know. And no amount of time will I know who I am. So it's not like I have to meditate some more to know who I am. I am unknowable. So Bodhidharma lives right here, you see, at the intersection of the horizontal time and the timeless now. And this is a very vibrant living space. It's a creative space. It's a living space. This is where Mu comes up and says, I am. This is the space of I am, but I don't know who I am. <laughs> I just know I am. I'm real. For the first time in my life, I'm real. Thanks for dropping in this morning, my little Zen sermon. <laughs>